In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, we gather on this Sunday to give thanks and praise to Almighty God, to recognize the very God in our midst, present to us in the great mystery of the sacraments, present to us in the great gift of His Holy Word, present to us in the very outpouring of the Holy Spirit that dwells within and is called to rejoice and celebrate. And so we come to offer this our act of praise and worship to Almighty God. We come from different places and different situations of our life this past week to reach the very summit of faith, the very altar of sacrifice at the foot of the cross. And so, dear brothers and sisters, from the depths of your inner being, call to mind those times where we have been separated from God. Call to mind where perhaps we have chosen against God's will, but also call to mind all of your deepest wants and desires and hopes that we can lay at the altar and raise up in Christ. Your brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Book of the 
and Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen one, I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not. So that toward the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The word of the Lord. Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father knowing, brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power 
and in the Holy Spirit, and with much conviction. The word of the Lord. Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in his speech. They sent their disciples to him with Herodian, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to, what, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. We give thanks to God always for all of you remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for all of you. How good it is to be able to come here together as a communion of men and women, children and elderly, coming to be united in the one act of sacrifice that is Christ on the cross before this very altar, upon this very altar. How good it is that we can come from the different places of our lives, the different situations and occasions that each one of us have lived throughout these past few days, and to be united as a people of God redeemed by God, sanctified by God. As a people of, as the sons and daughters of God the Father, who are saved by God the Son, Christ Jesus our Lord, and who are anointed and inspired and, and so much moved by God the Holy Spirit. And we see in God himself that Holy Trinity that is a unity of three persons. And we see that community life, that communion of life, and that is God, reflected also in the community and communion of our families, of our parishes, and not just St. John's, but all the parishes of our diocese and indeed the world. And like I said, we come with our own different challenges. We all come with different experiences. For many, perhaps, it was a great joy to spend a dinner together. 
or perhaps to gather as a family and go apple picking. Maybe for some of us, we've buried a loved one. Maybe some of us have struggled with different challenges of, of our relationships or our work. But each and every one of us can be united in that very salvation that comes from Christ, can be united in, in the very grace of Almighty God that brings us together. And so we see in God this great order, this order of love, this structure of love, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the lover, the beloved, and the love between. And so too do you and I and all of us who walk upon this earth aspire to some sort of order of relationships, aspire to some sort of structure of common good. And we see in our own nation how, or even in France most recently, how violence can break that order destroy those relationships of goodwill between men. And so when we think of our society, we are given we are given order in that society by the gift of law. And you know that I have a, a degree in canon law and I did the best that I could. <laughs> And so you, and, and as I studied it, I came to understand what law really is. And perhaps we here in the United States had an experience of coming to study law as we consider the nomination of a Supreme Court justice. And we could see how already this question of law is being contorted, confused. And, and, and perhaps even misapplied. We read in the, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church that law is a rule of conduct enacted by competent authority for the sake of the common good. A rule of conduct enacted by competent authority for the sake of the common good. So law is an ordering of relationships. It helps us govern our conduct. It helps us know when to stop when we're on the road so that we don't bump into the other one in front of us or across from us. It helps us know how to establish good relationships in our workplaces or amongst different peoples with different needs and necessities. It is a rule of conduct, not a dictate of some great authority imposing their own will, but rather an agreement between persons and those who have that just responsibility for the sake of the common good. And so when we hear in today's gospel this trick, this trap that the scholars of the law are trying to ensnare Jesus together with the Pharisees, we can understand perhaps a little bit what the Lord is allowing us to understand about the very nature of law. Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And already they're laying the trap. Because how easily do you and I, and perhaps so many others in our nation, are beginning to even doubt the absolute and the objectivity of truth? How easily has it crept into our culture and into our understanding? Well, you have your truth and I have my truth. You've got your facts and I've got my opinion. The truth is no longer true because it is so very relative in so many of our meeting places and discussions and discourses, even at the highest realms of public life. 
And yet here the Pharisees are saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. But how are they understanding that truth? How are they understanding the way of God? Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? And so they're inviting Jesus to make a distinction, or rather to, to highlight the very, the very breakdown within the understanding that they have of the law. So let's unpack this just a little bit. Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Let us understand that at that time, these Pharisees, these Jewish people of God, in Jerusalem, the city of God, were under the oppression of a distant authority, the emperor of Rome. The power and might of the secular world had come and subjugated them under Roman law and demanded that they pay tax. But as men and women of faith who know that the one law is that of God, they, the Pharisees, were rejecting that imposition of authority of Rome. Because they saw the law of the world as opposed to the law of God. And so they're trying to trap Jesus here and trying to say, are you going to tell us not to pay the tax and therefore stir up political strife and an opposition to Roman authority? Or are you going to tell us to pay the tax, but then deny the very nature of our relationship with God, who is our one God, you alone, the one lawgiver? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. And here they give him a Roman coin. The very sign of that society. Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. That you and I, dear brothers and sisters, live according to the appropriate authority of the world, our political leaders, the competent authority who governs this realm in which you and I live, and we are obedient to the authority of God, which is the very divine law. And so the trap that the Pharisees are trying to ensnare Jesus is to make us believe that the law of the state and the law of God are on the same plane. But the law of God is greater and informs the law of man. And, and, and they are not on the same plane. You have but one Lord who is your God. We hear in our first reading today, I am the Lord and there is no other. There is no God besides me. But look at our own society. Look how easily we've made our politics. Some have made their politics into their religion. Some have begun to understand dogma as opposed to democracy. And they, and they fight against one another in discourse where, we, where we've lost the sense of objective truth and where we no longer respect that law of God which is to be reflected in the law of man. But do you think God cares about how we establish right order about traffic rules and health benefits and all those different things of societal order? Yes, those things are good in the realm of this world, in the realm of our human relationships. But there is a relationship to which we are called that is over and above. And God does not compete with human law. Rather, he sanctifies it or allows it to be sanctified if we are open to him. Oh, look what's happened again. 
Our society seems to be confused about truth, about the dignity of the human person, about the sanctity of life, and about the free gift of God's salvation to all those who would receive it. And our politics have become so contentious that all we're doing is arguing about pity policy. Yes, consequential in the, in the span of human life, yes, but completely minimal when you consider the very call of eternal life to which we have been each called. And how many of those who are competent authorities in our social uh, reality, how many of them understand the higher law of God, who is the one and true living God? Or do they make up their own ideas of truth, their own ideas of goodness? Law is the rule of conduct enacted by competent authority for the sake of the common good. And so in the realm of human life, we as blessed here in the United States have a system of governance where we engage laws according to appropriate representation and according to a um, common will. But let us not forget the competent authority of eternal life, who is God, and who informs our daily life, who informs our human living. And I invite you to think of this now. And it's so funny because yesterday I was preaching and I was, I was thinking of the angels and the archangels. And I didn't bring it up in my homily, but I felt like I should have. And then suddenly our beautiful music ministry, Emily and Elizabeth upstairs, began singing the communion hymn. Ecce panis angelorum. Behold the bread of angels. <laughs> and I was like, ah, that's my sign. I should have said something. Because you and I, when we celebrate Holy Mass, are surrounded by the whole company of angels and saints. We hear in our preface about the thrones and dominions, cherubim and seraphim, powers and hosts. These are all different names of the hierarchy of angels. All these creatures, that is, created beings that live in the society of heaven. And you and I, dear brothers and sisters, are likewise creatures of God created beings, but in the muddy stuff of the flesh, the stuff of the earth. We have to scrounge up food and, 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 and satisfaction from the stuff of the earth, the dust of the earth. That's how we eat. That's how this flesh survives. It's but a sack of mud, but animated by the great power of the Holy Spirit animated by the great power of God, and sanctified by His grace. But you and I, dear brothers and sisters, as much as we are citizens of the world, and these great United States, as much as we are created things of this earth, you and I are already called to be citizens of heaven. As we are members of the perfect society, we pray that is the church as we engage in the society that is public life. But by that very gift of Almighty God, you and I have already been called sons and daughters of God adopted in Christ. And we live both in this society of the world and the society of heaven already by our life of faith, by our work of holiness, by our resistance to sin and temptation. You and I are already members of that society. We can't see it with these muddy eyes, but we can already live it in faith and hope and love. And so never forget about those angels and saints who are already rejoicing 
and who are already rejoicing here with us. But because we are still, as it were, tied to this earth, we are working out our salvation with Christ and being made holy so that we may see God as he is. So, dear brothers and sisters, let us recognize the power of the law that is the right conduct between persons. In this realm, in this world, formed and focused by love, not making social justice into divine justice or making human law into some divine law, but rather allowing that divine law and allowing that divine justice to inform our actions and inform our societies with the very truth of Almighty God. And as we live in this society, as we strive to make it good, let us never forget the society to which we truly belong. That is the very society of God, the realm of heaven itself. Render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Render to God what belongs to God. And never forget that you are the Lord. Amen. Let us turn towards, turning towards the Lord, let us be proud in the profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father of God, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. In God that they may authentically teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord for Bishop Robert McManus, our apostolic administrator, and for Bishop-elect Bill Burns, whom God has called to serve now as our Bishop of Springfield, that they may help us shine like lights in the world as we hold, up, as we hold on to the word of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord for our nation and the American people, and all the intentions we raise in prayer, adoration, rosaries, and processions, that God's glory may reign in our good be assured. We pray to the Lord. Lord for civic workers, that they may be dutiful and just in their service to Caesar of the world and to our God of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord For the Catholic Life Conference and all who have participated in encouraging Catholic life in our dioceses, parishes, homes, and families, that the Lord may shower his abundant graces upon us, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those prayers written in our Book of Remembrance and on our prayer line, those we have been asked to pray for, especially the people of the parish, 
for whom this mass is offered, as well as those we lift up from the depths of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. For the faithful departed, that they may now rejoice in the presence of God as they have rendered unto him their lives of faith and hope. We pray to the Lord. The Lord is our God, there is no other. With trust and fidelity, we turn to him with our prayers. May we receive his direction in our lives, now and always, Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession. To proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonder, wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. The Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. Born by the cross and resurrection. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, with St. Luke the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, William, our Bishop-elect, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Grant, O Lord, we pray. Participation in heavenly things. We may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepared for the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so giving thanks to Almighty God that we have participated in this very act of our salvation, the very participation in the cross of Calvary. We are there in time and out of time. We have received Christ the Lord in the flesh, but appearing as though bread and wine. So may we see through, not merely with the eyes of the body, but see through with the eyes of the soul. And may our choices always be informed by that very truth of Almighty God that informs our actions in our every day and in the world in which we live. We can change this world for the better when we understand truly what the good is, when we know what the truth is. And so, dear brothers and sisters, in a special way, as we've come from different places this week, especially thanks for the Great Catholic Life Conference that's still open and available to any and all to participate, to look at the videos, to participate in prayer from their homes. But also this week we had the great joy of hearing from Pope Francis the appointment of a new Bishop of Springfield, a new shepherd for our parishes and for each one of us, Bishop-elect William Byrne. Father Bill right now, but soon in December he will be Bishop William Byrne. And so please pray for him in these coming weeks and pray for our diocese and our parishes, our priests, and all of our lay faithful and especially our men and women religious as well who have served in our parishes, to know the grace of being able to follow the Lord. And so please pray for Father Bill. You can check out some of his YouTube videos. I know you're checking out our awesome YouTube videos. we got all of our masses and all of our fun things going on there. But he's got some fun things too, the five things with Father Bill, soon Bishop Bill. So check them out on YouTube and know that we're all connected, even though we're busy about in different places of our lives. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.